50, 40, 30. <laughs> step, step back, good, good, step back a little bit. Good eating size, nigga. Get you a little, uh, lift that bitch in the bed and hold it in front of the camera. Actually, you ought to get a video of the he'll, he'll go down good. Submarine. That was a really nice fish. That was a black grouper, roughly 30 pounds or so, but we didn't even have use for it. We had fish already in the boat and we got black grouper a lot bigger than that one also coming up later in the video. But I got to set the stage for you and let you know what's going on here because we are in an absolutely gorgeous boat. This is a 2024 44 foot contender completely decked out. It's got the full second station up top with steering. It's got, I mean, three massive lie wells across the transom. We got fishing gear, we got dive gear, we got a sea keeper, we got a generator, air conditioner, we even have a coffee maker. And we have Frankie. Now driving the boat, we got Captain Murphy and we got first mate Dustin. And we are leaving the Palm Beach Inlet and now we are checked in over at West End in the Bahamas to do some Bahamian activities. Once we cleared customs, it was time to continue on our journey down to the Abacos. Now, we're easily distracted, which is a very good thing, because that's how you find stuff. We're going exploring, we're looking for new stuff, we're going over new tracks, and we're not pounding the same spots over and over and over again. We're really looking for a lot of new stuff, and that tower makes it really easy for Ryan to see stuff from up there. While running, he came across this big sand patch that you can see right off the bow of the boat. So I slid in the water to check out what was down there and it was loaded with life. All these big pipes, I thought it was gonna be a lobster haven. I checked them all, there was not a single lobster. There were a couple nurse sharks though. So I'm thinking either they got pushed out by the nurse sharks or something happened. Now a little bit further on, we came across some ledges. And again, these are spots we have never been to before. And this ledge looked like the perfect lobster ledge. It was the perfect height. There was grass all around it and then a big little rock area. Uh, and I saw some really good shooting fish. I do have my sling with me. There were some really nice hogfish, but I was looking for lobster because that was the main focus for the trip right now is finding some lobsters. But this hogfish came really close and there were no lobsters around. So I shot it. I shot it with my headhunter gorilla sling that I have rigged up my own way with a, a string on the spear. It's about 250 pound mono I believe I'm using. And... I really like the way it works. I even have a slip tip shaft on the on the sling, which is overkill for hogfish, but I've had it work really well on some mutton snapper. And that's going to be my first fish of the trip. Hogfish is a super delicious fish, and we're looking for some fish for dinner, and it's hard to beat that. So I'm going to swim that up to the surface, and then we're going to switch gears. Then Murphy's going to go in the water. This is going to be a really fast-paced video because we have a lot of stuff happening because we're running and gunning. We're back in the boat and then we're running again. We got to cover ground. We got to make it to where we're going to stay tonight. first hoggy of the trip and that was my first one you'll see when i back out here next to the florida freediver fin it's it's about a seven pounder good size one murphy and murphy got, got the matching pair another hogfish that was cruising down there i saw both of them and we got both of them it was time to get back in the boat and start running we covered a little bit more ground and while i was in the water diving murphy was up on the bow of the boat and he bowed up on something he's throwing a little jig and it's just so crazy the amount of life He's got a nice mutton snapper on right here. Another really good eating fish. That one's probably around 16 inches or so, so perfect eating size. Uh, but we have those two big hogfish, so Murphy went ahead and let that go. But we stopped because there was more stuff around. He wanted me to swim down. We saw some kudos. We saw some life. And I saw this guy tucked into the rocks. Let's see if you can spot him. The fish you're looking at that's tucked into these rocks right here is a black grouper. Now, you saw one in the beginning of the video that we let go. This is what let us know we were in the right area. We started seeing some black groupers around. So even though I wasn't trying to spear this one, I got really close to it. I could have shot at it with the spear. Maybe I would have got it. 
But it was time to start fishing for them, and we're going to fish for them a way most people don't. We're trolling. What you're looking at now is our lure. We're dragging this lure across the bottom. The camera makes it look super blue, really pretty. And you can see all the rocks. We're covering a lot of ground really quickly. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a grouper came up that made those other groupers you've seen so far look like babies. And that's right here. That big grouper inhaled that lure. Now, once it did that, it was so strong and so powerful that it was making the camera glitch out. I actually lost a decent amount of footage, but I got the eat and I got some of the ending of the fight where you can see the fish is now sliding. We've done a lot of the big fight. He's fought hard and now we just got to get him up. So we're going to switch to above water and show you the ending of the fight. Once we landed this giant grouper, we were going to do something with it that most people would never dream of, and that's release it. This fish fought hard, it had a lot of life in it still, and it seemed like the perfect time to kind of preach something that I really believe in. Now, you know I have no problem with killing fish. I keep a lot of fish, but I don't like wasting fish. And we're staying on this boat for a day or two, so we don't want to keep the fish. We got a couple hogfish. Murphy brought out the descending device, and Dustin's hooking it onto the jaw of the fish right there. That's an eight pound lead, and it was barely enough to get that fish to go down. We're in about 60 feet here, or 70, 70 feet maybe, and it, the descending device took the fish down. Once it hit the ground, that descending device popped right out, and the fish was able to start swimming along and find its way back to the rocks. You saw the size of the last grouper. Now you're not going to believe the size of the one that comes up here. That's an amberjack, about a 20 pound amberjack, which we caught and landed. Now also there's a blackjack there, but wait till you see what this amberjack drew the attention of coming up right here. I'm just going to let that play. Massive black grouper. You saw the size of the last one. That one was far bigger. He's still following it. He wanted it. That fish, I think that fish was over 100 pounds. It was a massive black grouper. You can see him drifting off in the distance back there. We did land this amberjack. Didn't know anything about the grouper until afterwards when I looked at the video, but the amberjack was about a 20 pounder. We got him up to the boat. We let him go. Never thought anything of it. It's just really interesting that you see these things and you, you would never know if you didn't have the camera on the line. It's morning time. I gotta show you guys my room. I just got done making my bed. Got these 2,000 count bed sheets. I mean towels. That was my beautiful bed. This is where we get to wake up. Today is August 1st. That means opening day lobster season in the Bahamas. We spent all day yesterday uh, playing around a lot. It was a lot of fun. We did a little bit of fishing, a lot of diving, a little bit of spear fishing, but mostly looking for lobsters. So we'll show you some of that stuff now, and then it's time to go catch the lobsters because today is opening day. When you're good, you're good. You can see before we went out lobstering, we decided to do a little bit of fishing, let the sun come up a little higher. Dustin got that big old Ciro mackerel that was just lassoed, and then I hooked the fish on the bottom that would complete a Bahamas trip. It is not, did you really even go to the Bahamas if you didn't catch the fish that's on the end of the line right here? Strawberry? It wouldn't be a Bahamas trip without a little trip to Strawberry Fields. Yeah, that's true. And you know what goes great with the strawberries? Hang on, hang on, we got a better picture. <laughs> what? No, we're good. I got my strawberry fish and my strawberry drink. <laughs> Let's go up in here in the grass and catch some nuts. One of the cool things about being in the Bahamas is how quickly you can change gears. We just went from being out in 
I don't know, 150 foot bottom fishing all the way in shallow in about 15 minutes. And now we're looking for lobsters. We're looking to catch some big old lobsters, but where you find lobsters, you usually find mutton snapper. So this is the view from up in the tower. I'm gonna make a drop down and show you what I'm seeing down there. Again, I'm not really looking to spear fish. I'm more looking to find some lobster and then film the fish. I like getting the camera down there, seeing what it looks like down there. And it's just absolutely beautiful down there. In the Bahamas, you are allowed to spear lobster. That is probably the most common way to catch lobster in the Bahamas too. It's by using a spear. But the technique we're using is a snare. That's a snare I have in my hand right there. And you use either the snare or spear or something to kind of tickle the lobster out from the ledge or wherever they're hiding. And this is a good example right here of why I like the snare. Besides it being a lot of fun, it's, it's super easy to shoot them. And we're only allowed 10, so we would shoot 10 and no time at all we could shoot three or four per dive sometimes but look at this lobster i'm trying to work it with the snare and it just won't let its tail get untucked it won't walk into the snare like they normally do so it takes a little bit of coaxing but once i get the snare in the right position i tighten it up and lo and behold if that was a spear i would have shot that thing right in the head and it is loaded with eggs that means let it go so once i saw it had eggs i released the snares tension and the lobster was able to go back down to the ledge so I suggest using the snare, it's a lot of fun. And we'll get back to some more lobster.
Catching lobsters is a lot of fun, but you see some good fish while you're down there too. This was a good hogfish. This is a solid eating size hogfish. It was a female, so it doesn't have that big dark snout like the ones from the beginning of the video, but it's still about a five pound fish, a really good size female hog. Uh, and while we were out there, there was a mutton. It just kept following me. Right now, the mutton's right behind me. I've seen it several times. And I went up to the surface and asked for my spear because those lobsters really attract the muttons. Dustin, can I get my pole spear or sling or whatever? Yeah. You'll see that hogfish from the last clip. It's right here in the center of the video. It moved off that rock down to the bottom, but the mutton is still around. Now, mutton fish are pretty tricky fish to hunt sometimes, uh, especially by pole spear and sling. Now, spear gun. No problem. I would have been in range with that thing and many others all the time. But they do this side to side thing like you see there. It makes it kind of hard to get a broadside shot. But it turned a little too far and gave me a perfect shot and I let the sling fly. And then like I said, I have this string on my sling so I can pull the fish away and I can get back to the surface. And I just like to shoot it that way. It's been working really well for me and that's going to be a solid mutton snapper going in the boat. from lobstering. Got me a nice old mutton. Good one there. How far away to be? 